You know, one of the reasons we do this show 6 to 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning is because those fishing men out there get up early. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> and there were a lot of them headed to the water this morning, I'll tell you that. And many, many more on the water. It's time for Fish Bites. Before we get to what's going on here at uh, Strawberry, we'll get a little more specific with you uh, on tactics and things with the guy that knows, uh, Paul Phillips, who's here with us and hosting us today. And there's uh, fun to be had up here at Strawberry, of course, almost every day, but this tag fish thing has caused some excitement. And you said how many have been taken? They've taken 60 of those tags. And how many did you start with? Uh, 300. Oh, so there's still plenty out there. Still plenty of still plenty of tag to catch. And, and the $25,000 fish is still out there, too. Um, I can't tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, the uh, the twenty five thousand dollar fish and the two ten thousand dollar fish are assigned a number on a yellow tag, oh. and so no one will know what that number is until October fifteenth. Ah, so the idea is to catch as many of these yellow tags as we can get. Wow. And so, what's the process then? They bring the fish here and register that tag number with you somehow. Yes, there's four locations on the lake. You can go to any one of the marina sites, and they have an app application for you to to fill out and uh, register that tag and claim we can still claim a, a camp chef prize because the first 100 tags get a camp chef prize right. so those prizes are at all four locations here on the reservoir and and um, they'll take care of you uh, just remember you have you've caught one please watch for the tag we've had like i say a number of people go home with the tag not knowing they had it so I don't know how you could miss it from the yeah, pictures really. I've seen. Of well, tags. you know, you're just hauling in the fish right and left here, you know, and mm-hmm. so maybe you just get carried away and don't notice it. When you called the last time, you said you had uh, people that were limiting out with you, and you've had some incredible days up here. Oh, it it, it is really good right now. We're having people take limits of fish home, and and I have sold stringers like I've never sold before for a long time, so that tells me people are harvesting fish and taking them home. Uh, speaking of the tagged fish, I've got to say really quick, one of the red tag fish got caught, and there were a number of people in the boat. They were one of the ones that didn't know they had a tagged fish, mm-hmm. but that was a $2,000 payout. Oh! And they don't remember which person in the boat caught the red <laughs> tag fish. <laughs> so uh, they said they split the money. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, so. That's better than causing a family feud, <laughs> you know, down the line. Hey, I want to talk about tactics in the uh, five minutes or so we've got until we have to go to ABC News at the top of the hour. These boats aren't going too far from uh, the marina and, and are pulling up out there. So tell us where to go when we get here to catch some fish. Um, yes, these boats that are fishing right directly behind us are, are typically chasing kokanee. Um, the trollers will start right from this breakwater right here mm-hmm. and, and head toward the canyon and do a diamond type. Um, as you can see out in here, the kokanee bite's on right now. They're doing really well, catching a pound and a half type kokanee at 27 feet to 30 feet of water, um, using a pink squid, uh, pink assassin in the morning, and then changing to an orange color in the afternoon, doing really well. Um, some of the boats you see, they're, they're racing away. They're probably going to uh, a few of the bays that have a lot of rainbows in them. The south end of the reservoir, uh, down in front of the island, uh, right before you go down the canyon, there's a, a couple of uh, bays in there that have great rainbow fishing right now. So they'll race to those. We want to be fishing in about 30 feet of water uh, for the rainbows right now. The t- water temperature is uh, um, high enough now that it, it will chase those fish down to a deeper depth. So some of you are, who are not catching fish, um, it's probably just simply getting deeper in the water right now to be able to catch them. When we've been out with you before, uh, I think people might be surprised how close you actually pull your boat to the shoreline, parallel with the shoreline, and throw towards the shoreline and then just bring it back towards you. Yeah. Uh, is that still the tactic this time of year or no? It, it is. Um, those places that I've been with you, I know that the, the, the uh, depth of the water is pretty deep. So I can get closer into shore and then pull back. I'll cast in and pull back a little bit to, uh, to where I know that we're in that uh, depth of water that we're looking for. But um, also um, with the amount of rainbows that we have right now, you can almost pick any of these bays and go into them and just make sure you're in 29 to 30 feet of water right in that area, and you should be successful. Um, but you're fishing in the very lower uh, edges of that, right? I mean, sure. You're, you're down at the bottom. Yeah. What you don't want to do is go close to the shore, like like you said, Tim, 
and then have moss and all that stuff right. there. You need to make sure you're going into an area that has some deep water. I, I know the areas that are deeper, closer to shore that you can pull into. Um, there'll be areas that you'll pull into that you'll think, okay, I'm, you know, I'm 20, 30 feet offshore, you know, I can try it right here. But if you're, if you're catching moss and you drop an anchor and your anchor only goes down 10, 15 mm -hmm. feet, you really need to pull away from there and go find a place that's got deeper water. What about for the folks that want to come up after the cuts? Cuts are doing really well. Uh, trolling, all the trolling methods right now are are doing um, really good. Drifting a worm, we've done that together, yeah. uh, has been successful. You need to have a little bit of a wind going to be able to push your boat. You just cut your motor off and and let those lines out and drift. Trollers, they're they're trolling in the at 20 to 25 foot uh, range, uh, pulling almost any kind of lure, bright lure that you want. Our water. Um, is very, very clear right now. We didn't get a lot of runoff this year. We didn't have uh, a huge winter. So we have really clear water conditions. So any of the bright, flashy type lures are doing really well. A bright crocodile, um, orange-taped crocodile, or a green-taped crocodile down 27 feet doing really well. Is power bait for the rainbows and uh, minnows for the cut still your formula for most of the time? Yes. Uh, if you use power bait and no tipping with worms, you'll catch uh, probably 95% rainbow. Uh, if you tip anything with a worm or try worm on any of your lures, you're going to catch more cutthroat. And we need to remember there is a slot limit on those cutthroat. Right. So um, you can keep two under 15, one over 22. I'm with Great Basin Wildlife Rescue, and we're here at Strawberry Bay. We're going to uh, release a Cooper Hawk that came in. It's actually it came in as a baby, and it was brought in from uh, Provo Trail down uh, Provo Canyon. So it's grown up now, and uh, we made sure it can fly. We made sure it can test kill, and it's ready to return to the wild. So that's what we're going to do here in such a beautiful setting. So we'll release it here, let it go fly, and uh, have its new home here. If you come across any kind of raptor or any any bird of this sort. Uh, contact Division of Wildlife Resources or contact Great Basin Wildlife and what we'll do is we'll either come and get her, Division of Wildlife will come get it. Uh, try not to mess with the bird because they actually have very sharp talons, uh, beaks, and you don't want to get yourself hurt. Normally you do this with gloves on, but if you're quick and good. But he's still somewhat of a baby. He'll get a little bit bigger. These guys are actually bird hunters. These are the ones you'll see that are going to be uh, diving into your, your trees to take out little starlings. And they're pretty boisterous little guys. So we're going to kind of let him see where he's at a little bit. Like his eyes adjust to the light. And I said more than likely he's just going to come off and go up and sit up in some of these trees over here. But he's a pretty good sized bird. Not the biggest, but not the smallest either. But these guys are super fast, so a lot of the times these guys will actually run into like windows and uh, get injured in the wind, the high, high winds when they come through the canyon and stuff. So hopefully up here he'll do great, and uh, I think he'll have plenty of mice to munch on. So are we ready? Okay, on three. One, two, three.